today we're going to look at um, a titration problem, an, a an actual old AP problem um, that was used on a previous exam. And um, this little section um, in your notes has four problems in it, AP level solution equilibrium problems. And so today we're going to work one of them and I'll show you where you can find the other three problems worked. But I want you to pay attention to these four problems because they are very indicative of the kinds of things you'll run into on the AP exam itself. So in this first problem, we're supposed to determine um, that there's an acid-base titration going on where we have a strong base, sodium hydroxide, titrated with acetic acid. Um, they give us 40 mils of 0.1 molar um, acetic acid is titrated with 0.15 molar sodium hydroxide. Um, the first thing you're going to need to do before we do any titration problem is to go ahead and write out that equation so we can see visually what's going on. So we have OH minus is our base, and we're adding it to acetic acid, and that's going to be giving you AC minus. I apologize for my handwriting. I'm going to explain everything. I'm writing with a stylus, so... It's not my best. Okay, there's our equation. Um, we are titrating with that 0.15 molar sodium hydroxide into the acid. The question is asking what volume of sodium hydroxide is used in the titration in order to reach the equivalence point. So what we do know is that we're titrating 40 mils of this acid and it's 0.1 molar. Well, by definition, the equivalence point we know is where moles of acid equal moles of base. So knowing 40 mils and 0.1 molar, we can figure that out to be 0.04 liters, correct? 0.04 liters times 0.1 molar will give me 0.004 moles of acid. So to be at the equivalence point, I'm going to have 0.004 moles of that base as well. The question is, how many mils do we need of this 0.15 molar to, to give that many moles? So if we know that the molarity is 0.15 molar. We know that we need 0.004 moles of that base, moles per liter. That's how we can figure out how many liters so when we do the math here, we end up getting 26.7 mils NaOH. When we originally solve it, it's 0.0267 liters. Converting that, why do I convert it to mils? It doesn't say I have to do it in mils, but we know that when we use a burette, we measure in milliliters. So I would have been okay with you leaving it in liters. You really don't need to change it unless you're specifically told to change it. All right, let's take a look at part B. It says, what is the molar concentration of the acetate at the equivalence point? So just like an invader problem, I can show you here that, again, because all of these are invader problems, all titrations are, we're always adding at least one strong thing. Where do we get that acetate? Well, if we had 0.04 moles of here, added to 0.04 moles of that, we're going to do a shift left and we're going to add 0.04 moles of acetate. It is this reason this is not going to be a titration with an equivalence point of 7 because we have created 0.004 moles of conjugate base. So there's our moles. They want to know the concentration of these moles. They're basically setting, up, setting us up to find the pH fairly easily because once we have this, because this is what's left over, this is what wins, we're going to divide that by our total volume of, if you remember, we had an original volume of 40 mils of your acid, and we added 26.7 mils of the base. So in liters, that comes out to be 0.0667 liters. 
So the concentration then of our acetate ion, which is what's making it have a pH of something greater than 7, and I'm going crazy with sig figs. Don't do that. <laughs> anyway, looking, it looks like we have two sig figs in our 0 0.060 moles per liter would be appropriate mills. So this is part B. All right. So now moving on to part C, like I was telling you, they're setting you up for finding the pH at the equivalence point. They're just taking you through the process. They're kind of leading you, holding your hand. So we're going to now take that just like we do in any other situation. We're going to take what was left over after the invasion and we're going to do addition of water. That's all that's in the beaker after the invasion. And that is what's causing the, it to have a pH other than 7. And so we're going to make acetic acid plus OH minus. It's a good thing to note, though, that they did give us the Ka of acetic acid as 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. This is a hydrolysis problem because, again, what we had left over after this was the salt, right? Remember about the salt being left over right here. So we're going to instead utilize our information from our point 060 moles of this, zero, zero. We're going to shift to the right, minus x, plus x, plus x, 0.06 minus x, x and x. We're going to trump this, yay. And so we get Kb, I'm writing my expression, oh, look, we need a Kb. You should not be surprised at that. Remember, every hydrolysis problem requires that change. So we are given the Ka. So 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5th is equal to x squared over 0 0.060, right? And when we solve, I may get a little, a number a little bit differently than you do. Some of you might be getting something slightly different, um, mainly because when I did this, I kept that crazy number of sig figs here. So my answer will differ a bit, but don't freak out about it. No big deal. So my X, which is equal to my OH minus concentration, remember, you have to say what X is equal to to earn that potential point on the AP. I get 5.77 times 10 to the negative 6. That's equal to my moles per liter. When I take the negative log of that, I get POH to be 5.24 and subtract that from 14 to get my pH of 8.76. So this is definitely a problem that you guys know enough about and are 100% capable of handling on your own. Um, if you need to watch this again or slow it down or pause or whatever, go ahead and do that. I do want to just make note of the next three. Now, um, the next three problems we're going to do, I, I'm not sure what problems we're doing on what days in class, but by the end, all four problems in this little section will be completed. If you want to see this problem worked, as well as the two following in your in-class problems because you're absent or something, you can find these at the end of the video, in the next video in the series called titration curve and indicator video. There's a little lecture on titration curves and indicators and then at the end we work this problem and then we work this problem which is um, a super cool problem that talks about how to create buffers using different invasions. Um, and then we work this problem, and this is probably one of my favorites because it really breaks down the use of the titration curve and how you can find a from the half, Ka from the half equivalence point and how to choose an indicator and how to compare a strong titration curve to a weak one. And I think it's a fantastic problem, so be sure to watch that titration curve and indicator video, go to the end and you will see those three problems worked. That's it. Have a great day, folks.